All right, good morning. Welcome, good to see everyone here this morning. Hopefully you're all uh, pumped and ready to go. I am uh, ready to get at it. You know, this morning I started off my day with some pumpkin pie and some coffee, so I'm just r really excited right now. <laughs> That's the way you get to do it. You know, and, and this year too, you know, it's already, what, October what, 16th, you know? So I'm kind of breaking some rules and getting a little early Christmas music already. I'm putting some music in, getting that Christmas spirit. I see people's faces like, what are you talking about? You know, I, I, I'd have my tree up like maybe in November, but yeah. You too? Yes? Okay, see, it's not, I'm not the only one, but Trina's not having that. She'll probably, uh, after Thanksgiving, we'll get it up and, and we'll get it going. But anyways, I just, I don't know, I love the Christmas spirit and music and all that, so... I want to try to enjoy. It seems like every year, you know, Christmas comes and then it's just like here and gone. And, you know, I know it's not even Thanksgiving yet, I'm only talking about it, but I'm just telling you where I'm at right now. So, anyhow, welcome. Glad you're here this morning. So, you know, as we, we've been through our journey through the Bible a few weeks ago from Genesis to Revelation, it took about over a year as we've gone through all the books and, and uh, did all that. And now we're taking and doing a series out of Saddleback, the Transform series, and we did spiritual health already, we did mental health already, and then uh, today we're going to be focusing on the series on emotional health. Uh, how is we as Christians become emotionally healthy? What, is, what does that even mean? What, is, what does God's Word say about it? And so again, this is uh, not the typical way we've gone through Scripture as we've gone through the journey through the Bible. If you remember, the journey through the Bible is an overview, overview of everything. And we just kind of went through verses and, and kind of give a bigger picture. This is more of a topical thing, you know, topical style sermon. But I think it's important to mix things up and also just see what God's Word says about it. Uh, because here's the thing. Uh, everybody has some kind of emotional hurt or wounds in the past, whether you're aware of it or not. Um, and a, a largely a lot of these emotional wounds often can dictate how you see the world around you, can dictate some of your behaviors and patterns and things like that, even your mindset. And this is very much uh, linked into mental health. You know? So how, how are we as Christians become um, spiritually healthy, mentally healthy, and emotionally healthy? And this study is going to give some principles on what does this mean? Actually, just a quick side note, I am... Um, Probably about oh, three weeks ago or so, maybe four weeks ago, I started reading a book from a professor I had in, in seminary, and uh, it's, called, it's called Wounded. His name's Terry Wardle, and he was one of the well, very liked professors at seminary, and he wrote this book, um, and he wrote a lot of books on inner healing and wounds and things like that. But long story short, he, he was, you know, top of his field, you know, multiple PhDs, leader of presidents of seminaries, led a huge church of like 800,000 people or more, and just, you know, very, very esteemed up there. And then he talks about how one day it just kind of all came crashing down and he ended up in a psychiatric hospital because he had a mental breakdown. Uh, and he talks about um, just figuring out what happened and uh, he talks a lot about a lot of emotional wounds that he had when he was even starting young. And all these emotional wounds uh, impacted his mental health. And a lot of it even, he didn't realize it was going on until he was forced to realize it was going on when he had this um, mental breakdown. Uh, and he talked about just addressing these. And he talked about in this book, and again, I just haven't gone through it, uh, but I had him as a professor in seminary. He talks about you know, how these wounds, unless you really deal with them, that they're, they can really impact your mental health, and if you don't deal with them, it can have some damaging effects in your life. But nevertheless, that ties in with today's message on emotional health, because everyone here at some point has been hurt, wounded, even as a young child, maybe you don't even realize something happened, and it impacts the way you see the world, it impacts how you interact. And so we'll look at some principles today, what God's Word says about how do we be emotionally healthy. And God wants to be emotionally healthy. Uh, we see God is even a great healer in Scripture, not only physically, but in every area of your life. If you look at uh, Psalm 147, he says, He heals the brokenhearted and bandages their wounds. And so this is a God who wants you to be, you know, not only spiritually healthy, mentally healthy, but also emotionally healthy uh, because He cares about us. He loves you. You have a purpose. Uh, you're, you're not here by accident because um, as we see the worldview of Christianity, of origin, meaning, morality, and destiny, origin, what is the meaning of life, um, 
or what is the, or where do we come from, rather? Uh, origin, meaning, what is the purpose of life, morality, how to determine what is right and wrong, and destiny, what happens when a person dies. All of this comes together, and as you think about this, uh, how does your, your mental health and spiritual health and, and emotional health impact the way you view some of these things? But anyhow, this is what we're doing out of the Saddleback study, and so we'll do the five steps. Number one is this, and uh, you must reveal your hurts. You know, I must reveal my hurts. Sometimes we're not honest with maybe some of the things that have gone on in your life, whether something you've struggled with, something that someone that has hurt you, someone that has done something wrong, some, something that you're going through. Uh, but this is a real thing. You know, we often try to just not address some of these things. You know, we don't, maybe don't realize it or we don't even want to talk about it. And we have to be careful with this. Um, actually, Psalm 139 examines what happens when you push this down. This is what uh, David said. David said, I kept very quiet, but I became even more upset. I became very angry inside. And as I thought about it, my anger burned. Holding on to hurt and hurt, holding on to wounds doesn't make it better, does it, right? It's like an open wound. If you don't deal with it, it just becomes festering and festering and festering. And also, too, same with anger and resentment and all these things that you might hold on to. That's why the Bible has a principle about not letting the sun go down on your anger because oftentimes, you know, as you ruminate on things and think about it, you become more angry and more upset and more disgusted at what happened. Uh, and this is the thing that you know, David was realizing, you know, as he was thinking about it and thought about it, he became angry and his anger burned inside. And so you can't just ignore these things. If you have some kind of anger or resentment or hurt of someone that did something to you, it could be happened, you know, 5, 10, 20 years ago, whatever it might be, 50 years ago. You have to actually deal with it in some way. You can't just, you can't just hide it, you know, because here's the thing. People often will respond to hurt and abuse in unhelpful ways. One method people is they just ignore it. You pretend it didn't happen, no big deal, and, and uh, you just push it away, never happened. Another, another way is that you try to cover it up. You know, you try to, and you can do this in different ways. You can try to mask your hurt and wounds in different ways. Some people form different um, kind of coping mechanisms for it. Some, some are you know, often very unhealthy, but some people, may, maybe you go to alcohol for, for, for comfort. Maybe some people go to uh, drugs. Maybe some people go to, um, you're a workaholic and always trying to work. Maybe some of people develop a, a, a people-pleasing kind of mentality where I always got to please people and I'm, and I'm just trying to prove myself. Uh, maybe some people go into a promiscuous lifestyle to feel um, this love or, 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 or acceptance or whatever it might be. But all, long story short, it, it can be all kind of forms, but really what it is, is a form of escapism, right? You're trying to escape the hurt. You're trying to cope with this. And some people, and again, if you really study in depth in this, we don't have time today, sometimes you do this, oftentimes you do this unconsciously. Like you don't know you're, you're doing this or why you're doing this. You just are, are doing this, um, whatever the behavior is. But the first step in becoming emotionally healthy is to really address this and say, you know what? There is this open wound or hurt or, or unforgiveness or resentment or, or whatever that emotion is. Um, and you have to reveal it. You have to address it because otherwise it's not going to, to happen. Uh, and so a few things you have to do is, um, first you've got to be honest with yourself, right? You have to sit down and say, okay, um, is there something in my life, are there some things in my life recently or even 50 years ago that I really have never dealt with or um, revealed in a healthy way. Um, so honest with yourself, then you got to be honest with God. you got to take it to God and express your real honest emotions. He can handle it. His shoulders are big enough. You can, you know, because pe people have gone through you know, bad things. I mean, you know, you might think, well, okay, someone didn't say hi to me and I'm mad at them or someone, someone, uh, said a bad thing about me behind my back, whatever it might be, but there, there's even some deeper stuff there. What about people who were raised in abusive homes and, and have really uh, faced harsh abuse in their life, or, or people that, ha, um, I've experienced people that have been raped in the past, and how do you, how do you deal with that? Or people that have uh, always grown up with harsh criticism of parents when you're young, or, or all these things that go on, right? And so you gotta sit back and say, okay, um, I gotta be honest with myself, honest with God, and then thirdly, honest with other people. It's good to talk to somebody. Find uh, 
a counselor, a pastor, or even a, a close friend that is spiritually mature that you can talk to. Or, but it's, it's okay to do these things, you know? But you got to do the work. You can't just ignore these things. But if you want to be emotionally healthy, you have to reveal your, your um, uh, hurt. So look at this, says in Psalm 32. When I kept things to myself, I felt weak deep inside me. I moaned all day long. That's David talking in Psalm 32, saying about how just emotionally drained he felt by pushing this down. You know, uh, he just he was going through all this stuff, but you got to get it out. You got to get it off your chest. And we see this principle here: don't hold on to these hurts. They'll just fester, and you got to be honest about it. That's step number one. Step number two in this is I must release those who have hurt me. You know, we've talked about this before. So this is not rocket science stuff, but some people they they, they spend their whole life carrying around this hurt, this anger, this resentment, and it's not helpful emotionally. It really, it really isn't. It is damaging us in so many ways. How are you going to live a, a happy, fulfilled, joyful life when you're walking around hurt, angry, miserable all the time? Or, or even different times? Because the, the age-old saying is holding on to this stuff is like drinking poison and thinking it's going to hurt the other person. It doesn't, right? It just hurts you. It makes you feel terrible and bad. Not only that, but this person that has done whatever it is, you know, um, it's bad enough they did what they did, but allowing it to still evoke this feeling of misery and hate and anger, you're just allowing them to perpetuate the offense over and over and over and over and over again, right? And so a couple things we have to think about this is, as you think about... If you, and again, you might take, really think about it. Think about your childhood. Think about some really hurts that you experienced and how you're going to maybe need to deal with it. But um, as you do this, I, I just say this is, this is not saying what the person did to you is okay. You know, that's the thing. Some people have a real hard time with forgiveness or, or dealing with these things because you think somehow you're saying what they did is okay. It's not. It's not saying what they did was okay. Uh, it, 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 this is even more so for you than it is for them, right? And think about that. This is not saying what they did to you was okay because it was not. This is not, and I think sometimes too, we don't want to forgive and release this because we're, we're afraid that they're going to get off the hook somehow, right? That they're, they're getting away with it. That's not what it's talking about. This is for your mental health, your emotional health, your sanity. To be emotionally healthy, you have to release those that have hurt you and not carry that around and you got to give it to God. That is the key thing here. Look at Romans 5, 8. Also says this. It was while we were yet sinners that Christ died for us. Meaning this is God forgave us even though we didn't deserve it. You know? That when you start realizing how much slack God has cut you in your life, then you need to be able to release other people and say, you know what? I'm going to give this to God because God forgave us though we didn't deserve it. So you forgive and release people, number one, not for them, but for you. Number two is because you realize that God forgave you. And, the, and, and also, how many times have you, maybe you wronged somebody or done something? Um, we've all done that. We've all messed up. None of us are perfect. And so you have to think about this. And again, I, I, I get that there are some real deep wounds that people carry around for many years. And people have done been really, really awfully hurt in so many ways. Like you see, and I've heard so many stories of just, it makes you angry, it makes you disgusted, it makes you upset. But what do you do with that, right? Again, releasing them is not for them, it is for you to get yourself mentally, emotionally more healthy, to not have to carry that around, to not allow them to perpetuate the hurt over and over again. Uh, but these are some two principles that we can see here in terms of that. Realizing what God has done for us and for our forgiveness, and also realizing it's not for them. Look what it says here in Ephesians chapter 4. It says, Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger, brawling and slander, along with every form of malice. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. You know, that's a, uh, a powerful message. It really is. You want to get rid of this stuff. It's like poison in our systems. We often carry around this poison in our systems, and we don't realize it. And uh, we have to be on, on guard against that. And again, I'm not saying forgive them because they deserve it. Because, you know, who's, they probably don't deserve it. I'm not saying they deserve it. And, and also, I'm not saying forgive them because you feel like it. You may not feel like it. 
but it's a step in becoming emotionally healthy. It's a step in overcoming some of these things. And, and again, it's, these are some of the things that we probably intellectually all know or have heard at some point in time, but it's important to refresh our memory and realize, you know what? I want to become more healthy in these areas of my life. I want to address these things. Um, and, but there's a lot of people, not, not even just personal vendettas or hurts they're holding on to. Look at the amount of just hate and bitterness and rage and anger and brawling and slander that people hold towards politicians that they've never even met, right? And like, you're just carrying yourself around all the time, mad, angry, upset over all of this stuff. And let me ask, like, what benefit does that do for anything? Is that changing anything? Is that changing what the political people are doing? Is it changing what's happening out in the world around? It's just making you feel awful, right? That same thing with the, uh, the mental health we talked about last week is the garbage in your mind, garbage out. If you fill your mind with negativity and all this anger stuff, uh, that's what's going to happen. And, and again, like when you see something, when you see an injustice or when you see a hurt or a pain, like it's natural to feel outrage or injustice or whatever it might be. But what do you do with that? If you just ruminate on that all the time, it's not a good place to be mentally or emotionally, and you're not going to feel good. Uh, and you're going to have a hard time growing in the area of what you're called. That's why it says right here, I mean, it's black and white. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, brawling, slander, malice. Be kind and compassionate, forgiving each other just as Christ forgave you. Uh, this is not some in-depth, abstract theological principle here, right? This is basic um, things that are built into, like spiritual principles, laws, if you will. The same way there's a law of gravity, there's a laws of, uh, in the spiritual realm as well. When you apply these things, you'll see a difference in your life. But, but nevertheless, um, I, I, I just say this is, you, you, you might think that letting a person, releasing them of that and, and, and not dealing with that is, is somehow them getting away with it. It's not. You know, I've, I, I've seen stories, man, like the stories back um, with the genocide in Rwanda and things like that that happened, that so many people are wiped out of tribes. Then you see these people in tribes come to Christ, and they actually are, you see video on, and of them meeting face to face with the people that slaughtered their families, and they release them and offer forgiveness and embrace them. You see stories, I've seen a story uh, last, a couple years ago, this, this, um, uh, young man killed this, this woman's uh, young son, and in the courtroom, you see her in tears, obviously, of what happened, but then she embraces the guy and hugs him and says she forgives him, and, and, and the killer is, is, you know, crying as well. And it's like, mentally, you're like, how does that, how do you do that, right? Like, that's not, that's not going to be an easy thing to do. Uh, there's, I'm not saying it's going to be easy, but I'm saying is what's going to get you emotionally healthy, what's going to not have that carry on, and also what's going to help you overcome some of these things. It doesn't change what they did. But again, it doesn't, it doesn't get them off the hook. It doesn't, it doesn't excuse what they did. Look what it says here in Psalm 56. It says, you have kept a record of my tears. Hmm. You know what? You can spend your entire life trying to get even, but you're not going to get emotionally healthy, right? You can get emotionally healthy or you can get even. You can't have both. And this says God, God is there. Like when you, when you were wronged, when someone did something wrong to you, when you, were, when you were crying, when you were in despair, God's not going to forget that, right? That's the good news about the God we serve, that in the new coming kingdom, right? New heaven, new earth, all things you restore to talks about. That God is in the business of restoring and righting wrongs. He's not going to forget. He's there weeping with you as well. He, 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 he binds up the brokenhearted. And, and so you have to realize this. And also go to Romans 12. It says, Never pay back evil for evil. Never uh, avenge yourselves. Leave that to God. For He has said that He will repay those who deserve it. Romans 12, 17 it says. So again, trust God. God will deal with it. This is where the thing says, you know what? Um, what they did was wrong, awful, whatever it might be, but I'm just going to give it to God because I can't carry on this hurt and pain and anger all my life because it's just, it's just too damaging. It's not benefiting anything. So I'm going to give this to God and He'll deal with it. So that's the principle there. We won't spend too much time on it, but again, if you want to practice this, you've got to learn this, this healthy. So I uh, reveal my hurt. I release my hurt. And then third one is this. Third principle is I have to replace old lies with God's truth. 
Uh, we talked about this a little bit in the last one because it's very much tied with um, mental health is what is in our minds is just, man, where does it come from? You know, you think about that. We have so much in our minds that have been going on that we just now are on autopilot, right? Many of the ways we see the world, many of the ways we treat other people and interact with other people is based on what has been kind of put into us, right? And so what lies have been put into our mind? Our minds are fascinating things. It's like the most super advanced tape recorder, if you will. It's, it's crazy, right, to think about how our minds work and consciousness and, and all of this stuff. And I've been watching a lot of things, even just with neurosciences and psychologists talk about you know, how we can reprogram our mind. And the old saying is the neurons will fire together, wire together, and all of that. It's just fascinating stuff. And then even when you sleep and you dream and things, that's why sleep is so important, actually. It talks about your brain. That's part of like cleaning up garbage and stuff in your brain. So like useless things or things it doesn't need, it knows, and it kind of like clears out this matter. But nevertheless, we don't talk about that. I just say this is what lies are in your mind right now? You know, and it can be from a very young age. Man, you know how many people that were raised when they were little and saying, you're no good, you're no good, um, you're not smart, you're stupid, you're, you're, you're ugly, you're, you're slow, you're, you're never going to be anything. Why can't you be more like your brother? Why can't you be more like your sister? Uh, you're no good. And no one could ever love you. God, whatever it might be from other people, right? And then somehow you believe this stuff and people grow up... Be, beaten and defeated. Now you also have a lot of people growing up and they're programmed that you're a victim, right? That people are, and there's no way you can get ahead. And, and, and all of this stuff that people are, you're programming your mind. So guess what? You have this mentality that I am no good. I am, no, I am a victim. I can't do it. I can't achieve. People end up being defeated, right? All of this stuff. And so you have to ask myself, what old lies have been told? People often say, well, it's just the way I am. But again, from last week's mental health, doesn't mean it's okay, doesn't mean it's healthy, doesn't mean it's right. So you have to examine what is going on in my mind that have had this, right? And we know one of the ways you change this is by controlling what goes on in here. As we said last week, you can't control the weather, there's many, you can't control the people's behavior, but you can control what you put in your mind. You can control what you um, meditate on and dwell on in your mind, right? And if it's all negative anger, garbage, hate, um, whatever it might be, that's the way your life's going to go. That's the way you're going to feel. Look what it says here in Romans 12 too. Let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think, right? We know this, right? What we think controls the way we feel. The way we feel controls the way we act. The way we act determines the path of our life, right? So if you want to change a direction of your life, just from last week we know, you got to change. It starts with changing the way you think. What are you putting in your mind? And so when you put all these things into your mind, mm, it, it helps reprogram some of these things, right? And so when, when you come and say, oh, I'm no good, and God doesn't love me, and he could never do anything with me, you say, no, no, well, where did that come from? It's a lie. And then what does God's word say about me, right? Go to Hebrews 2.11. Jesus, who makes people holy, and all those who are made holy have the same Father. That is why Jesus isn't ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, right? Do you know that? Jesus is not ashamed of you, right? That, that, that God created you, He loves you, He has a purpose for you. Uh, there, there's so many places that see that you are fearfully and wonderfully made, and so you fill your mind with that truth versus whatever else the world is saying. Because have you ever asked yourself, like, the beliefs that I have about myself or about others, where did that come from? And is it, is it pertaining to what God's Word says? As we've known before, I've said about a hundred times now, even, even Peter, in, in, in the course of like one paragraph, one, he recognizes Jesus the Messiah, and Jesus you know, uh, blesses him or, or, or commends him for that. Then a few verses later, when he tried to stop Jesus from going to the cross, he says, Satan, away from me, get behind me, saying that thought didn't come from the Father, right? And so you can see how quickly it can go. Where does, what is coming here? What, what is going on in between your mind is going to greatly impact what's going on in here. Um, we see that. And so what, what are we putting through? We've got to change the way we think about things. Fourth habit, real quickly, if you want to heal emotional wounds, is you've got to refocus on the future. That's a key thing here. Um, many, most people, um, we're, we're, we're not emotionally healthy. A part of it is because you're either 
stuck in living in the past or you're worried about the future. You know, those are the two things that's going on. You're either stuck and worried about what already happened, it's done, or you're thinking about what could happen or where you're going. And uh, that's also uh, can be challenging too. Many actually will say the key is living in the present moment, but that's a different sermon. But I will say this is the key thing in, in terms of this sermon is, you know what? If you're going somewhere and you're driving somewhere and you try to do it by looking in your rearview mirror, it's not going to work. You're going to get in some accidents, right? And so as you are going through life, if you want to get emotionally healthy, you can't spend time stuck in what you could have done, what you should have done, what someone else did to you. You got to refocus. Okay, where do I go from now? Because you can't change the past. You know, you can't change the past and the future is not guaranteed either, but also you can refocus on where you want to go, where, where God wants you to go, and not spend time dwelling on old hurts and things. Go to, you know, when Job was going through a hard time, remember the story of Job? We all know the story of Job and he was going through some challenging times. Uh, it seems like Job had three principles or steps here in chapter 11 that helped him get through the, ch- the challenging time. This is what the advice he had when going through a su- terrible time of suffering. Go to Job chapter 11 and says, Put your heart right, reach out to God, face the world again, firm and courageous. Then all your troubles will fade away from your memory like floods that are past and remembered no more. Hmm. So what do you say? So first thing, put your heart right, meaning... Give up your right to get ang- to get even. You know, re- release that. Um, get your heart right. Right. So you find out what the issue is, whatever it might be. You you get that. You deal with that. You release that. You you not allow that person to continually to uh, live rent free in your head, if you will, twenty four seven, three sixty five for for five, ten, fifty years, whatever it might be. So you get your heart right. You know, you don't forgive them because they deserve it, but because it's more for what's going on in you. So put your heart right, then reach out to God, meaning, okay, go to the Lord and say, God, I'm giving this to you. Uh, God, you deal with this. I'm laying this down at your feet. I can't carry this burden anymore. I can't carry this stuff anymore. You deal with a God. But also remember, we serve a God that as Jesus is being crucified, he prays, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, right? And so that's a big impact in terms of when you are, 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 are spirit-led and when you are reaching that level of spiritual maturity, you know, you have that anger maybe or so, but then you stop back and look at them, like, man, what happened to them that they would even do that? What? Because that's the old thing, right? hurting people hurt. And so people would have done whatever to you, man, what happened to them? Who hurt them? Who, who damaged them? Who, who whatever to them? And so that's the, the, kind of the vicious cycle thing, but nevertheless. So put your heart right, reach out to God, and it says, uh, face the world again firm and, and courageous. So, meaning you don't curl up into a ball. You don't just withdraw from the world. You don't put up walls and say, I'm never going to trust anybody again. I'm never going to let somebody hurt me again. It means you just... Well, Paul did. He got up and he pressed forward, right? We know the Apostle Paul went through some hard, challenging stuff. Beaten, prison, uh, exiled, you you name it. But he still pressed on, got up. He didn't give up. And that's a good thing, right? He he looked forward and said, you know what? I can't control that what's going on, but I'm going to keep on going to what God has called me to be. Because guess what? God has called you to do something. God has called you to to be something, right? And so, not only are you beyond love, but He wants you to be spiritually healthy, mentally healthy, emotionally healthy. He doesn't want you to live in defeat and anger and fear and, 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 and uh, hate and all of this stuff. And so you press forward. That, look, that's a principle right there. That's, we know what Job went through. Put your heart right. Reach out to God. Face the world again. Then what happens is, then all your troubles will fade from your memory like floods that are past and remembered no more. Now again, it doesn't mean that you'll never actually remember them, but it means it doesn't become something that defines you. It doesn't become something that controls your emotions, you know? And it's amazing to think, I've studied a little bit on like people with anger problems or challenges, and oftentimes uh, a lot of these uh, anger, uh, it can be traced way, 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 way back to something that hurt them or, or something they were kind of you know, programmed to act way um, by an event. And then something happens where they're put in situations that 
triggers that subconscious memory and then their system of fight or flight kicks in and it just runs on autopilot and they don't even know why they're acting the way they act. It just comes out in rage or anger or outrage, whatever it might be. But it's a fascinating thing to think about how our minds um, can be um, uh, affected. And so this is a good principle to put into place to try to get past and move beyond these things, right? And he says he faced the world. You look ahead. What, what, what does God say my future is? What does God say I can be? And then you don't get that down into there. So we think about that. So again, real quickly, just reveal my hurts, number one. Release those who offended me. Uh, replace those old lies with God's truth. And refocus on the future. And then when you do that, again, Proverbs 4.25, look straight ahead with honest confidence. Don't hang your head in shame. You know, Jesus Christ on the cross took not only our guilt, but our shame. That that's, he took that. He bore our iniquities. He bore the sin and shame over you, who, who you think you are. So again, if you want to become emotionally healthy, you've got to really take some time to think about this. But many people won't, right? Many people, we just put our head down and just keep just pushing through, right? The problem with that is, it's just like uh, you take some, a bottle of Pepsi, you put some Mentos in it, and you shake, 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 shake. And that pressure's going to build and build and build, and then one day, you know, that's what happens many times, people, is you don't actually deal with this stuff. You think, I'm fine, no big deal, I'm not going to think about it, or whatever it might be. But if you... I know, because I've been there and done that, right? And you don't, maybe, maybe you don't feel stressed. Maybe you don't feel uh, mentally or emotionally unhealthy. But if you don't actually address these things, over time it will build up and they can manifest in different unhealthy ways. Um, even different studies now talk about how the effects it can have on people's health, actually. Like physiologically, they're showing the, the effects it can have on just your cells and the way they function and things like that. But, but nevertheless, different topic altogether. And lastly, number, number five, you got to reach out and help others. You know, one of the steps is becoming emotionally healthy is realize, you know what? Um, I can't just focus on me. You know, this is another step into spiritual healthy, but if you just focus on you and yourself and your problems, studies show, just secular studies, you will not be very happy. You know, some of the most miserable people are the ones that focus just on themselves, about me and my, and the most happy you are often focused on other people. And I see this as, don't waste your hurt. Don't waste what you've gone through. You have a unique story. You have a unique um, perspective to tell, but the Bible talks about that. You know what? Whatever you've gone through, you can help somebody else that have gone through something similar, right? God can use that pain and transform it into something helpful for, for someone that's going through something, right? Go to um, 2 Corinthians 1. says, God comforts us every time we have trouble, so when, we, so, so when others have trouble, we can comfort them with the same comfort God gives us. You know, it can help others. If someone is going through something, they're going to be able better to relate to someone that has gone through the same thing. You know, if, they haven't, if, if you haven't gone through that, you don't have that full perspective. You don't have that same understanding as someone who is going through it. You, now you can try to offer um, comfort and be there, of course. Um, but there's something that says, you know what? Here's my story. I've been there through, and you can overcome that. You can get through that. And so. Think about, how can I use my story, how can I use my hurt, my pain, my wounds to bring about something good, to bring about maybe healing, to comfort somebody else who's going through something else? You see all these stories of, of tragedy that's happened, and while it may not reverse the tragedy, and doesn't reverse the tragedy, you might say, okay, well, if that tragedy didn't happen, is there any good that came out of that that otherwise wouldn't have happened, right? And there's, there's all kind of ways you can go about looking at that. But I just say that is, you know what? We live in a broken, fallen world. We know that. Hurting people hurt. We all fail and make mistakes. This is not heaven, so don't expect it to be. But how can we be a people that are there for people that are also going through hard, challenging times? Um, because we've all been there. We, we, you know, let's not pretend it is. You might sit here now and not even think about it because you want to pretend everything is good and great and you never deal with the core thing you need to deal with. Now I'm not saying be stuck in negativity forever because you can't, but you've got to refocus and move forward. But you also got to be honest about it. There's some things you've got to deal with in your life. You know, 
uh, and get healthy with. That's a key thing. And, and the key is this though, do you want to get emotionally healthy? That's the thing. Do you want to get emotionally healthy? Do you want to get spiritually healthy? Do you want to get mentally healthy? Remember the old, remember the story when Jesus encounters, I think it's, oh, I can't remember, is it blind Bartimaeus or is it somebody else? I can't remember. But long story short is when he encounters the man, the, the question he asks is what? Do you want to get well? That's a very interesting question to ask somebody, right? But Jesus asked him, do you want to get well? In that case, if the guy is healed, then he can no longer be a beggar. He can no longer just sit there and beg. He has to pick up his mat, get to work, right? And I think there are some people that they don't want to get well. They want to remain a victim. They want to remain stuck in the way they are. They want to have, remain having excuses. And that's the, that's a real honest thing you have to say. Do I really want to get well and address some of these things that I have to? What is pushing my anger? What is pushing my resentment? What is pushing my depression? What is pushing my sadness? What is pushing my mentality upon the world or myself, whatever it might be? You know, these principles God offers to help us to get healthy in these areas of our lives. Um, 2 Corinthians, is it one up there? Or, uh, chapter 5 says this, When someone becomes a Christian, he becomes a brand new person inside. He is not the same person anymore. A new life has begun. And so, as you do that, we are recreated new. God puts a spirit in you, and you are a new creature in Christ. Now, there's still some things we've got to move forward, because we have still the flesh and the old things that we struggle with, because we're still here. Um, but just think about that. You are a new creature in Christ, Shouldn't, we don't have to be the same way we've been, you know? Um, and again, the question this morning is, do you want to get emotionally healthy? It's very much tied in with, with um, uh, spiritual and mental health, because you look away the world around. Look, I mean, just think about all the stuff that's going on in the world. You can agree with it or disagree it, but you look at the, the push of victimhood, you, 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 push the, you, you see the push of um, safe spaces in college universities and things like that. You see the push for um, a victimhood mentality. You see the push for people getting quote unquote triggered and all of this and that. It's like, what's going on here? Are, are people in our culture becoming more mentally and emotionally healthy or less mentally and emotionally healthy? Well, any secular study will, will tell you just there's a mental health crisis going on in our world, in our, in our culture. Uh, there's, there's an emotional health going on in our culture. And so what is going on that is driving that, pushing that? And then we as Christians, how do we not get sucked into that? And how do we press forward in getting healthy in these areas of our life? I know it, um, you know, I don't know what you think about it, but I just think that, man, many of us, we walk around just unhealthy, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. And so that's the key. I encourage you to, what do you want to do with this? Be honest about it. If you think that you don't have anything to deal with, you're probably fooling yourself. You have to think about it, because, um, but we often don't want to think about it. We want to push it out. But I encourage you, let's do this. As we go through the Transform series, we want to be people who are becoming healthy in every area of your life. If you missed the first two sessions, you can go online and watch them about spiritual health and mental health. And we have a few more sessions that way we can become healthy in every area of your life. So I encourage you to apply these principles if you want to become more uh, healthy in these areas. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this day and everybody here. God, as we go through your word, Lord, we know many people here are hurt. They've gone through some loss. They've gone through some hurt. They've gone through some pain. They've gone through tough stuff, God. Maybe they've never even told anybody about it, but you know about it. God, help them to see your love for them. Help them to see you want them to become healthy in these areas. God, as we're right now, heads bowed, help us to see that you are a God who is not ashamed of us, that as your children, you're there for us. And God, right now I pray that anyone here going through these things, apply these principles to their lives. Help them to reveal the hearts, to not just try to escape them or to hide them or deny them, but to be honest about them with themselves, with you, and with some, at least one other person. And then God, help them to release the other person of not carrying that around, to give it to you, 
to replace the old lies that have been in their, in their mind, but with your truth, that, you, that they are loved, they are more than conquerors, that they are wonderfully and fearfully made. And then God helps them then to refocus on the future and your plan and purpose, that, that you might heal them, you might heal us, that we might heal others, and use that pain in our life to help others overcome for your glory. God, guide us and lead us. Let us be a people that this year are more aware, more dedicated, more driven to become healthy in all these areas of our lives, to become more of who you are called to be, that we don't have to live in fear, anger, and defeat, and depression, and sadness, and, and, and all this stuff, God, that we are more than conquerors in Christ. And I pray, God, touch whatever pain, hurt, challenges they're going through, Father, and help us to apply these principles to become emotionally healthy. We thank you and praise you in your son Jesus' name. Amen.